Hello and welcome to Point of View. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine and retaliatory economic sanctions against Russia by the United States and its NATO allies, the question everyone seems to be asking is, what does a war between Ukraine and Russia mean for the International Space Station? The orbiting lab ISS is a joint venture between the US, Russia and a few other partners. In this video, I'm trying to unpack what impacts could the Ukraine crisis have on the ISS. But first, full disclosure, I'm not a geopolitical expert or a defense analyst. I'm only going to focus narrowly on the implication of the Russian military aggression on the US-Russia cooperation on the functioning of the ISS. The jointly run ISS has managed to stay out of political struggles for two decades. The current ISS crew consists of two Russians, four Americans and one German. Before we discuss the ISS operation in the current environment, let's look at a similar geopolitical situation involving Russia in 2014. It was the year when Russia attacked and annexed Crimea, then a part of Ukraine. Back then, the US was reliant on the Soyuz rocket and spacecraft to send and bring back its astronauts to and from the space station. So when the US imposed heavy sanctions on Russia in 2014, the Roscosmos boss Dmitry Rogozin famously tweeted, and I quote, after analyzing the sanctions against our space industry, I suggest the US delivers its astronauts to the ISS with a trampoline, end of quote. Rogozin threw another hissy fit on Twitter on Thursday, February 24th, 2022. He posted a Twitter thread after Biden's speech in which the US president said US sanctions on Russia over Ukraine invasion would degrade Russian space program. Rogozin scoffed at US sanctions, calling them Alzheimer's sanctions, and said if the US blocked cooperation with Russia, who will save the ISS from unguided deorbit to crash onto the US or European territory? Anyway, despite the threats and counter threats, historically the two countries have remained cordial and cooperative in space and the ISS continued to operate normally. Fast forward to 2022 and things are a little different. Now the US has access to Elon Musk's SpaceX rockets and the Crew Dragon capsule that can deliver astronauts to the space station. Russia's bargaining chip is gone. On the technological front, both the American and Russian segments on the ISS are heavily reliant on each other. The US relies on the Russian segment of the station for propulsion while the Russians are dependent on the US for electrical power. All of the Russian segment's command and control and life support functions are now replicated entirely on the US segment. However, the one thing that the Russian segment provides which the US segment does not have is propulsive support. The Russian segment's engines provide all of the reboost capability for the ISS and its thrusters are the only means of propulsive attitude control. With the current political tensions, some industry experts are wondering as to how much longer the US-Russia relationship in space will last. Some fear Russia could simply withdraw propulsion support from the US segment. In reality though, that's unlikely and simply not technically feasible. Since both segments are physically attached, it's impossible for Russia to withdraw propulsion support without also withdrawing it from themselves, with the end result being that both segments would eventually fall back to Earth. Interestingly, the last Cygnus capsule that recently arrived at the ISS has the ability to reboost the ISS. Problem is, because Cygnus attaches to the ISS right at the center of the station, its ability to provide attitude control would be likely inadequate. By the way, a small side note. 
Cygnus was launched atop Northrop Grumman's Antares vehicle. Ironically, the first stage of Antares is built largely in Ukraine and it has the RD-181 Russian engine. Cygnus is built by the US and European companies. This demonstrates no matter how countries are divided on Earth, they are intertwined in space. Anyway, back to the ISS and fragile peace in space. Despite the issue of propulsion, NASA holds a trump card. The Russian segment depends on the US segment for supply of electrical power. There's a component called the American to Russian Conversion Unit ARCU which transforms 124 volts of direct current or VDC US power into 28 VDC Russian power. Without this, the Russian segment would be unable to produce enough power to support itself. The US could threaten to turn this device off. However, like the propulsion scenario, it is an empty threat. A Russian segment without adequate power would not be able to provide propulsive support. Hence, NASA would be scoring a self-goal with this move. Another scenario. The Russians and NASA sometimes trade crew time with each other for help with tasks on their respective segments. The Russians could order their cosmonauts to permanently close the hatch to the US segment so that the two segments essentially become two separate stations. If the hatches were closed between segments, which would prevent airflow between them, Russia would be totally reliant on their own life support systems and would be unable to be supported by NASA's systems in the event of a failure. Moreover, it's doubtful that the crews who have lived and trained together for years would even carry out this order. The most recent area that could be affected is the recent reciprocal deal to fly Russians on Crew Dragon in exchange for flying Americans on Soyuz. International traffic and arms regulations and visa restrictions could now make this more challenging. If the reciprocal deal were cancelled, then NASA would be forced to decrew the US segment should Dragon or Falcon 9 encounter a technical snag that causes a stand down, at least until Boeing Starliner comes online, which is probably a year away. In the end, the simple fact of the matter is that the Russian and US segments both depend on each other for survival. Therefore, NASA and Roscosmos are going to have to continue to cooperate on at least some level for some time. A further point, NASA has already announced that it intends to retire the ISS in 2031, with Russia planning to launch its own space station in 2030. But it will be a sad day if the pinnacle of human cooperation gets caught up in geopolitics and the ISS mission has to be aborted prematurely. Only time will tell. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.